and we're going to talk about creating and executing web performance tests in this section. So what will you learn? Well, we're going to talk about creating and running web tests. We're going to show you how you can use the test results viewer to see the results of your test. We'll discuss how you can go about editing those web tests. And then lastly, we can discuss any issues we have when we're actually uh, running the playback of those tests. So we could run into some, some issues and how we go about resolving some of those common issues that are happen to folks when they're playing back their actual performance tests. We're going to actually go ahead and create and run a web performance test. So what will you learn? Very simple. We're going to create and we're going to run web performance tests inside Visual Studio. So what does that look like in Visual Studio? Well, the web tests are a project template in Visual Studio. So when you go into File, New Project, you can, under the test heading, you'll see Web Performance and Load Test. You just select the Web Performance Test, then it'll walk you through actually creating the Web Performance Test. It'll create the project and then, you know, add your web test to it. Then you record the screen. So there's a recorder that's plugged into IE that you can use to record the screen. Now, if the recorder doesn't show up when you're running IE, it could be disabled. So you want to go into your settings and check it out and make sure that it's actually enabled. And I'll show you where we do that in the demo so that you understand that if it doesn't show, go there and check it out. And then um, update any requests that are needed. You know, as you're going through the scenario in your application, like if we go with the premise of we're buying a shop, buying an item in the shopping cart, then there may be some cruff in there that we don't want, and especially when we start out, for example. So we want to remove any of those types of requests that are out there that don't really re do anything with our site. And I'll show you how some of those that get created and how you go about removing them. So when we run the test, it's actually run from a test runner inside Visual Studio. As you can see here, it's going through and running a particular test. Exercise the application in various areas. So here it's hitting my Mercury Health app, um, my nutrition app. So I can go ahead and, and see there that it's going to various different areas of the application. So with that, let's go into the demo. Like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on slides in these next two sections. And let's go look at creating web performance tests in Visual Studio. So what I do then is I go in here and I go on to the, in the Solution Explorer and I right click on the web test project and I go to add option in the context menu and then down to web performance test. This is going to add a web performance test and you can see it fires up Visual IE for me and it has the recorder on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go in here and just go to my website. So hacker.net and we'll, you can see it's capturing all the requests as we go through. I'm just going to exercise the site, go to all the different links that I have and that looks good and I can go over here and stop. Now you'll notice at the top here we have, well first off we're detecting dynamic parameters and we'll talk about that later in the course. But for now, just understand that we're grabbing some values that we're going to want to use later on. The parameter values are things, uh, items that are passed into the requests. So let's uh, wait for that to get finished up here. Usually takes a second. And once that's done, we can actually go through and look at what's available for us to remove actually from this application, this web test. And so what you'll notice here on the web test too is you have all these different API Bing.coms. We don't need any of that. So I'm just going to select them and each one I'm going to delete one at a time just hitting the delete key. I don't need any of these. And let's go up here and delete this one. And we're going to start off the test going to my website. Then you can see that we have a request here. And you can see any of the headers or parameters being passed in. So if you're using query string parameters on your site, you would see those here and you'd be able to actually replace those if need be. Then we go into the speaking tab and then the videos tab and any dependent requests that are set up there. So for example, we have this particular request and this one here has the headers and it's basically the refer. So we'll go into that a little bit later on in terms of when we edit the web tests. But for now, 
we've basically created a web test. So what I want to do is I want to run this web test. So how I do that is I go up to the toolbar here. I can just click on the icon to run the test, but I want to show you the options. You can run the test. You can debug the test. Uh, you can run the test but pause before starting or debug in the same manner, pause before starting. So I'm just going to run the test. And you'll notice here that it'll bring up the uh, results window here in the center of the screen. And you can see it's going through and it's exercising my application. And we're getting 200 responses, which is okay. And you can see here that we've actually completed the test almost. Uh, everything looks pretty good. And let's let it finish up here. And then we can actually see that we had a 100% successful test. So let this finish up. And you notice here the timings. Some things are taking longer than others. So obviously I have some kind of issue with the about page because it's taking a little while to show up. The test is finished now, but I want to go in and investigate why these are like they are. So I have the ability to look at data, like the details data, uh, the context, the response, what response did I get back, what was the request and various information about the request and then the web browser itself what did it look like so with that let's go back to the slides and wrap up and then we're going to drive into uh, editing web tests so join me as we do that okay so what did you learn in this particular video well we talked about creating a web test and we showed you how you go about to create a web test in visual studio file new project create the web load test type project and away you go. Then we actually ran the web test and or added it to the project and recorded the screen scenario that we're going to walk through. And then I ran it once I had the scenario and the tool. You can see I removed, if you remember, removed some values from my web test that weren't needed. There, and now we could run the test, ran the test, and you notice that it took a little longer for some areas than others. And it was a great indicator for me of what areas I need to look at for my application.